Hello and welcome to Big in Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. My friend and I are here in Ueno Zoo, in the children's zoo, where you can see various indigenous Japanese breeds of chickens roaming around. This one is called a Tokenko, and as you can see, he's docile enough to hold in your arms, for now anyway. Chickens in Japan are appreciated for their aesthetic qualities. Some are even known as living works of art. Let's start off today's show with a look at the world of ornamental chickens. Selective breeding of ornamental chickens spread in the 17th century and led to the development of many distinctive Japanese chickens. 17 breeds are now designated as protected species. The chabo is a small, short-legged fowl. They're elegant little birds, sometimes referred to as walking bonsai. The chamo, on the other hand, stands tall and strong. It's an aggressive breed used in cockfighting. The ukopke, with its soft, fluffy feathers, hardly looks like a chicken at all. Also, its skin, internal organs, and even bones are all black. It's a pretty peculiar bird. Among these diverse Japanese chickens, one that's famous around the world is the Onagadori. This bird's tail feathers are over five meters long. Some Onagadori have tail feathers that reach 10 meters or longer. Chickens usually shed their feathers once a year. But about 200 years ago, thanks to a random mutation, a male chicken that did not shed its tail feathers was born. The feathers just kept getting longer and longer. Starting with this chicken and gradually improving its characteristics, more and more chickens with long tails were bred. To prevent the long, beautiful tail feathers from dragging on the ground, when the birds go outside, the owners always hold up the tails with great care. It's not just a chicken's appearance that can be admired. Some breeds are appreciated for their crowing. Crowing competitions are held in various places around Japan. Birds are judged on things like the duration and melody of their crows. The Tōtenko is a fine example of a long crowing rooster. The pure, high tones of one single crow can last for 30 seconds. A breed called the Tomaru is known for its black feathers and full-throated crow. Seiji Chokki just loves these long crowing roosters. His favorite is a breed called the Koeyoshi. It makes a sound unlike any other rooster in the world. This deep, low sound is nothing like the high, ringing crows of other breeds. The koyoshi closes its beak when it crows. It's almost as if it's growling. That low-pitched crowing, I find it soothing. It soothes me. It's relaxing to hear it. It's not just about the duration. The low pitch and the way it expresses itself are also key factors. It's wonderful when a bird gets it right, but it's not easy. The key to appreciating a long crow is to keep your ears open for how it changes pitch. The pitch rises, peaks, and then begins its long fall. This is what aficionados look for. Chokki trains his birds in a rather unusual way. First, he places the koeyoshi in portable wooden boxes, 
keeping them in darkness for several hours. When he removes the birds from their boxes, they think morning has arrived. Then he puts them up on practice platforms. In order to stir up the bird's competitive spirit, he places two koi oshi on platforms right next to each other. That kind of crowing is no good. The bird is still young, of course, but the crow is too short and the modulation wasn't good at all. These long crowing roosters don't always do what you want them to, and that may actually be part of their charm. The number of special Japanese chickens is shrinking. In Japan's urban residential areas, you can't let roosters crow at full volume. Also, chicken fanciers are aging, and there are fears of bird flu. This bird has the lowest crow in the world. People have been saying for 50 or 60 years that it would die out. But I was determined. So I started producing the eggs and raising the chicks. It took the time and effort of many people to create Japan's remarkable ornamental chicken breeds. But the challenges of preserving them are growing. Well, you can see now why they call the Chubbo walking bonsai. Isn't he tiny? They have another special enclosure here for some of those long-tailed onagadori, and they've arranged a special visit for us to go and see them, so I shall say goodbye to our little feathered friend here now, and we'll move on. This is where we keep our onagadori. It's in here? Yes. Okay. So, let's have a look. Here you see the body of the bird. That's a pretty small room. Okay. And the tail is in here. Okay. The tail may get even longer, so there's plenty of room down here. It's kind of surprising to see a bird shut away in a cupboard like this, as it were. If it walks around outside, the tail will get damaged, so to prevent that, we basically keep it in this box here. Oh, so he just hops in your arm. Oh. Well, it's pretty impressive, but the tail's not actually not as long as I was expecting. To extend the length of the tail actually requires a lot of time and effort, not to mention technique. Oh. At our zoo right now, we are indeed trying to make its tail get longer. So this breed doesn't automatically grow to that length. There's a lot of work involved in it as well, I see. Hmm. Even so, it's a pretty impressive looking bird. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move on now and take a look at the long history of Japanese and their chickens.